Welcome Libra to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 18th of March for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. As last week came to a close, there was a quarter moon in your sister air sign of Gemini. That's very much about freedom. But that squared up to the Sun and Neptune in the Kazemi on Sunday in the part of your situation to do with commitments and responsibilities. You may start this week feeling a little bit low in physical vitality, but also perhaps potentially a little bit uh, resentful if you feel that your goodwill, sacrifice, hard work and application are being taken for granted to such a degree that your needs and your freedoms are being compromised. But the great news, Libra, is that on Wednesday, the sun powers into your opposite sign. Returning to Aries, the start of the Western tropical year. This is your seventh house, joining up with Mercury, the North Node and Chiron. The seventh house is going to offer you so many uh, wonderful opportunities, but particularly from the solar eclipse of the 8th of April over the next half year. But it is about really understanding where you're perhaps giving your power and perhaps sacrificing too much of yourself in slightly the wrong way. It's not because you're not being perhaps uh, uh, well-intentioned. It may be that other people are taking you a little bit for granted or perhaps you're working too hard at not quite the right thing. And the reason I'm saying this is because your rule of Venus is going to be applying to Saturn as this week goes on. Venus gives you great charm and a great ability to relate to people skillfully. But what Saturn does is bring a slice of reality to that part of your nature that likes to be a good egg and really asks you to think again. Also, because on Friday, Mars moves into your sixth house, whereas Neptune since 212, Saturn since 223, and more recently, the cluster of energy in Pisces have really been putting you under quite a lot of strain, I feel, in terms of uh, sacrificing your energy and your time to support other people, at least encouraging you to be very virtuous and focus on your work a lot. And that's probably uh, taken quite a lot of energy out of you. But Mars moving into your sixth house is really going to bolster you. If you're someone who is interested in exercise and keeping well, right through to the end of April, you could find that any uh, fitness uh, New Year's resolutions that you made that may have got slightly pushed to one side, you can reignite them uh, from the end of this week through to the end of April in a very positive way. Also, if you feel that you are working too hard, perhaps in the wrong job, or you don't have very appreciative or respectful colleagues, Mars is going to make you feistier. And that can see you looking to make a change. If you're going to really apply yourself and be dedicated, which you may want to do, it's vital it's in the right situation. And Mars will help you to really shape the outcome in a more assertive manner. But that change, that spring equinox, really is fantastic because it also links to Pluto in your fifth house, which since the 21st of January, along with Mercury initially, then Venus and Mars has been evoking you to express your creativity and your individuality. And you can do this in spades over the next six months, but you probably will shine best where you can collaborate. Don't beat yourself up about it if that's the case. If you're someone who enjoys working closely with someone, this can be a partnership if one is in place at the present time that can grow because Pluto and the Sun in a sextile can be where we evolve. But equally, if you don't have that at the present time, someone may be about to emerge in your situation through from the 8th of April right through to the uh, solar eclipse in your sign on the 2nd of October. So there's lots to look forward to in how you relate, but it's key that you get your boundaries sharper in terms of what you give, how you give, in terms of being dedicated, precise and applied, particularly if you're putting a lot in and not feeling that you're getting so much out or it's compromising your freedom, which is the story right at the start of this week. 
So by the end of the week, Venus, your ruler, also forges an awesome alliance with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet, the grand benefit, the planet of fortune. Venus, the lesser benefit, still a planet of fortune and prosperity. They're coming together in a superb alliance, one of the luckiest in astrology. All the hard work and dedication can come back to you at the end of this week, for sure. But it's possible that if it does, it could be really quite life-changing for you. Because Jupiter in the 8th house suggests that something could come through for you, which really gives you a reward for some devotion you've shown over a long period of time. Perhaps the reward is that you're just going to get closer to someone that you've been seeing romantically. But in a practical context, you're working things out together and your collaboration is starting to shape up really well. But it's the thrust of Mars from Friday. It's going to give you a lot more vitality. So even if you start this week feeling a little bit low in energy, as I mentioned before, maybe even a bit resentful about how much you're having to put in, as long as you can mark out your boundary and forge more constructive relationships, there's so much that's heading in the right direction for you.